So we're going to begin with some review information as we begin Chapter 4. The first thing that I need you to remember are your basic trigonometric functions. Um, those would be the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Many times, um, teachers will use something called SOHCAHTOA as a way to remember what they are. First, let's start with sine. Sine is uh, of some angle, which many times we're going to designate with a theta. That's just a Greek letter. Um, the sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the ka in SOHCAHTOA. And the toa portion is your tangent. Your tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now let's do some problems where we actually practice using SOHCAHTOA. Now anytime you're dealing with um, an angle that you are trying to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of, you want to make sure that you have all three sides. You can only use this if it's a right triangle. You locate where the angle is, so our angle is in this bottom corner. And then we have to label what's our opposite, what's our adjacent, and what's our hypotenuse. So across from our, directly across from our angle is our opposite. Our hypotenuse is our longest side. Our adjacent side is the side that is a leg that is coming directly off of the angle. So in this particular problem, opposite is 3, um, adjacent is 4, and hypotenuse is 5. The hypotenuse should always be your longest length. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this particular case, it will have a ratio value of um, 3 fifths. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it will have a value of 4 fifths. And our tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it will have a value of 3 fourths. Now let's go to our next triangle. Let's say we're in that same triangle, but our theta has been placed in a different corner. Because it's in this corner instead of the corner that we saw in the other problem, um, our opposite now becomes 4, our adjacent becomes 3, and our hypotenuse is 5. So now let's do the same thing that we had seen before. Our sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 4 fifths. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 fifths. And our tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 4 thirds. So that's just a basic trig functions you should have probably gone over in your Algebra 2 or Geometry course. Now the next topic we want to talk about are special triangles, like a 30-60-90 triangle. Now the 30-60-90 triangle because the ratio between the position of the angles and the sides are always the same for every 30, 60, 90 triangle, because they're all similar, um, we can use some really nice information about these triangles in order to allow us to find missing information. Now, let's say that you know the uh, angle that is across, or the, the side that is across from our 30 degree angle as some a, uh, length x. What's really nice is the hypotenuse is always going to be double that amount, and the one across from the 60 is square root of 3 times that amount. So that's a rule that you just need to know. Um, if you are going backwards, let's say we know our hypotenuse value, you would just divide it by 2 to get to your one across from the 30. And then once we know that one across from the 30, you just tack on a square to 3 and you know the one across from your 60. Um, probably the hardest one to deal with is if you know the one across from your 60. We have to divide off square to 3 to get to here. And then once we divide off square to 3, we need to multiply by 2 to get to there. So um, that's just some information about 30, 60, 90 that you should know, probably from a geometry class. Now here is our 45-45-90, or for, sometimes called the 45-45 right triangle. Our 45-45 right triangle is really nice. We know it's an isosceles triangle because the two angles match. We know these two sides also match. 
And um, because of those sides being matches, we'll call them both x. Uh, the hypotenuse, if you did the Pythagorean theorem, is always square root of 2 times x. So if we need to go the opposite direction, let's say we are given the hypotenuse, just divide by square root of 2, and you know both of the legs. So that's how you need to deal with a 45, 45, 90. And they're always going to be like that. That relationship is always going to be true. Now let's go ahead and do some um, examples that use a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45 right. So in example A, we are given our 30 degree angle, and across from it is a 5. So um, that means that this is a 30, 60 triangle. The one across from our 90 is always double our 30 degree side. So it's going to be 10. And the one across from our 60 is always that value across from our 30 times square root of 3. So that was easy. Now let's take a look at example uh, B. For that one, <coughs> we are given one of our legs is 6. So because this is an isosceles triangle, it's a 45-45 right triangle, we know that x is also 6. The one across from my hypotenuse, at this point, if you forgot the rule, you could just use Pythagorean theorem. Or my suggestion, just remember the rule that you just tack on a square root of 2 or multiply by radical 2. So that's basically how you use the 30, 60, 90, 45, 45 right rules. Another rule that they would like you to remember from your geometry classes is the triangle inequality. Basically, the triangle inequality states that for any three sides of a triangle, the sum of two sides will always be larger than the value or length of the third side. So if we want to see if three sides could line up in such a way that they form any sort of triangle at all, um, we can just look at example A here, and this largest side better be smaller than the sum of the other two. Well, in this particular case, 5 plus 6 is 11, which is not greater than which is not greater than 11. It's equal to 11. So that means that there's no way for that one to make a triangle. Now let's look at part B. For part B, we are looking at 4, 8, and 9. So just take the smaller 2, 4 and 8. Better be bigger than 9. Well, it is. 4 plus 8 is 12, which is bigger than 9. So yes, this could form a triangle. Our next piece of information that you need to know in order to uh, have that background information you want for Chapter 4 is our Pythagorean theorem. Uh, remember, our Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The main component, remember that your a and b are your legs, and your c is your longest value. It's your hypotenuse. So if you remember that, the placement into the formula is usually pretty easy. Now, let's take a look at example a. We're going to find the missing side x. So you'll notice that in this particular case, we are missing a leg. So we know that 8 squared plus x squared should equal 17 squared. Now, 8 squared is 64. Um, 17 squared is 289. And then we subtract them, so x squared is 225. So x will be the square root of 225. Now this is one case where our plus and minus isn't really going to help us. We, I'm sorry, this is a length. So a length needs to be a positive value, and so we want a positive 15, and so x is 15. Now let's do the same thing for part b. 
Now you'll notice in part B this time, that's our longest length, our hypotenuse that we're missing. So that's our C value. So we know that nine squared plus 40 squared should equal X squared. So if we set up our Pythagorean theorem, we know that 81 plus 1600 will equal X squared. And so X is the square root of 1681 or 41. Now to the way to kind of quickly check that you are right, our hypotenuse value should always be the largest. So in part A, 17 should be our largest value. Part B, 41 should be our largest value. And, and it is. So that's a really quick way to check that your work is right. So finally, let's remind you of our rules of asymptotes. Um, when we had worked on rational functions. Remember your vertical asymptotes are where your denominator is equal to zero. Your horizontal asymptotes, you're going to compare the lead terms at the top or the bottom. If the um, uh, top power is higher than the bottom power, there are no horizontal asymptotes. If the higher power is on the bottom, then it's just y equals zero. If the powers match on top to bottom, then just use the coefficients on the lead terms, and that will give you your asymptote. So now let's go ahead and do some examples. If we do part A, you will notice that the power on top and the power on the bottom is the same. So for our horizontal asymptotes, it's going to be y equals the coefficient on top over the coefficient on the bottom, or 2. For our vertical asymptotes, um, we're just going to take the bottom and set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So for this particular case, um, it would be x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. So we end up having two vertical asymptotes where x equals negative 2 or x equals positive. Now let's jump to example B. For the power on top, it's actually a x to the first. On the bottom, it would be the multiplication of these two x's, so 2x squared. So since the bottom has more, the, our horizontal asymptotes for this particular problem is 0. We have more x's multiplied together on the bottom than we do the top. It's always 0. For our vertical asymptotes, Remember, you're just going to set the bottom equal to 0. Now, luckily for us, they have factored it for us. Since they have factored it for us, that means that we can just break each factor equal to 0, and we get vertical asymptotes of 3 and also at 1 half. So that's your rules of vertical and horizontal asymptotes you should remember.